Right, let's see if we can't get this working. See if, um, if you could, see if that actually works. Um, requests to be in your broadcast. So let's, um, no, oh, there we go, add. Bring the reporters on camera. watching Steve and Jaffe Lindley from over in the wild, wild west. Troy Possel's watching too. Holy shit, there's a blast from the past. That's better. Oh, good, man. I've got you on, um, I've got you on, like, microphone. It's so windy here, man. Can you hear that, Steve? Is that wind coming through, man, or is it okay, bro? Pretty please. Oh, Ros might be coming on. I reckon it's the Facebook app, eh? Because Ros and I have done this before without any problemo. Here she comes. Cool. So I got a thumbs up from someone there to say it's going good. And Ros is still coming. Come on, Ros, baby. What are you doing, girl? Ros, oh, I can hear you. Well, that's a good thing, but I can't see you, Ros. Can hear you, mate. Oh, thanks, champ. Gwyneth for Williams. A big life. So, Walt, send me another invite. Ros Waters. Add viewers to be in your broadcast. Oh, I can't, Ros. I've already sent you one, girl. I can't send you another one. It, it won't it physically. Your name's not coming up. Mal Curls watching. Um, so I try to I try to bring you on, Ros, but it's saying. Request to be in your broadcast. I can't add you. Tammy's disappeared now, Mal Kerr. Shit. Can you request Roz to come on? Yeah, that's it. Roz Waters approve. Bring Roz Waters on camera. Facebook's shit, eh, team, sometimes. So unreliable. When I did 365 lives for a year, we, we all sorts of dramas. Oh, oh. hey! Yeah, <laughs> are we on, girl, or are we, we on? We're on. Can this, you hear me now? Oh, I can. Can you hear me properly? Yeah, I can now. Wow! And Friday technology. Oh, that's great. Huh? Isn't again. No, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. I was actually going to try okay. and turn Hang on. on pod... I'm just going to turn this around. Hey, yeah, and hold on, I'm just going to go to podcast land and get podcast land started. So just, um, okay, we're, uh, we're, ki... someone said we're killing it. Yeah, good on you. yeah killing it, killing, killing technology. It, said... Who's that? Scotty Thornton. Yeah, we're killing the freaking, te... I'm just going to, you're going to leave, lose me for 30 seconds. Just hold on, because I want to make sure. Oh, see, now, you, now we can't hear you again. It must be the podcast. It's... Interesting to That's know. So, what it so is. we can't do... We can't do podcasts. It's the podcast. Yeah, because as soon as That's you turn okay. that on, we couldn't hear you. Right, oh, thanks, Jan. Oh, finally some sound, someone says. Yes. Alana. Kendler. No, I think it's the podcast. Now we've worked that little. <laughs> Chris Peters. Oh. <laughs> that little glitch out. Oh, we're learning all the time, Anton. Oh, I know, girl. Mark Cuthel. <laughs> Mark will be on in a few weeks, Don. Yeah, Mark's so, been so in for me. any name. So talk me through it, Ros. We're down here at Malula Bar. Where are you today? You don't look like you're at Lightbox. Are you at home? No, it's a bit quieter here. I'm at home. So I'm, yeah, I thought I'd sneak okay. home and do it in the quiet. It's a bit noisy up there. So a bit of background noise. Good on you. How's the try Good going? Have you girl. run yet? No, it's Sunday. Okay. So what's the, what's this one? Sorry. What do you have to do? Is it like a full one? Oh, it's full, fullish. It's not, full on. It's not huge. Full yeah, full, it'll be full on because I, I haven't done any training and I, <laughs> I'm, I've been eat, eating and drinking full Yeah, how's on. that keto working for you? Oh, that sucks, man. No more keto. 
No. But no, I've, 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 kept my, I've kept my weight pretty good. I just haven't trained because I did a hammy. Did I tell you? That's a, no, you didn't tell me that. Yeah, I did a How hammy. How are you going to run uh, with a ham, bad got, hammy? Well, it's going to be a long 10K and yeah. some of them might be walking, but that, that's You'd okay. We're going to get through it. I will, but that's, that's my 11th straight. So I'm, <laughs> I'm aiming for 30, 30 straight rods. So I'm going to make sure that I get it done somehow. Oh, I don't know when. That's awesome effort. Awesome effort. Is Jules hey, going Rose, in this one? You... No. No? no. She her just your tears. Bike... Shosh, and she's good. She's a good try wife, Ros. I don't know if you can see our bikes. Can you see the bikes through the glass there? In the, uh, they in the hotel room. Wow. That looks That's like a it. fancy place. Where are you staying? We're staying at the Nautilus. It's oh. bloody beautiful. What's girl. your view like? Have you got a view of anything? Oh, just buildings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and there's some water there, and the river, the Maroochee River. Uh, no, it's not Maroochee River, some river. Okay. Oh, Mar 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 I don't know, something. Water. Oh, cool. Mm. Okay. So when's that on tomorrow? Sunday. Oh, okay. So, very, very excited. So you take the whole week to prep? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and, How are you prepping? And then Monday to drive Wine, wine and cheese platters on the balcony? <laughs> yes. Well, we had two Canadian clubs out there before. <laughs> had a little Irish pub at O'Malley's. That was good. So, mm, beautiful. Alberto will love that. Hot. Alberto said he always drinks oh, before a marathon. Too. <laughs> he does. <laughs> and it's been so hot down here today, Roz. Like, it is I'm hot everywhere at the been... moment. Is Glado hot? Gladstone, it, it, we've, it's a bit cooler. There's a bit of a breeze today, but it's been a hot summer. We just need more rain. We've had a bit of rain. Oh, but... I know. Greening up a bit. Yeah, sure. There's some really sure. bad places out west. I was just talking to mum out at Clermont and she got excited because yeah. they got six mil of rain, but their dam's nearly empty on the farm. So it's pretty bad out there. Is that right? Yeah. Right, cool. Yeah. Shit. There's some farmers still in a lot of trouble. So, yeah. Stay, stay strong, farmers. Stay yes. strong. Yes. So, All relationship. Right. So, talking of. <laughs> We're like milking Love this. this yeah, but I was thinking we're, about it today, and no, I'm like, are people going to get sick of this? We're not milking it. No, I think no, we're actually getting traction out of it because it's such a big topic, and because we both deal with people so many times, I think everyone's really enjoying it. Well, the feedback I've got is everyone's enjoying it, so, yeah. yeah. Um, and we talked to, to John me, Cerotti last week. We did. It was talking about, was oh, no, the week before, because you were away last week again, you little gut about. That's right. Oh, Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm travelling so much. You should have seen where I was, man. I was out back south Australia, a place called Carapatina, New Gold Mine. I knew Copper Mine. So you um, yeah, just carried uh, a backpack? Yeah, just took a backpack because mm. you can't carry too much luggage on the flight. So it was so, a yeah, little no, plane? Could, and would you, was it just a yeah, little plane? Oh, it actually wasn't. No, it wasn't that little. So I don't know why there was luggage restrictions. Um, oh, okay. And would, you, and would you believe, get this for a story, Ros, so there's a guy on here, Darren Brett Schultz, right? So Schultzy was my mum's favourite student in 30 years of teaching. Oh, wow. Right? No shit. There was someone in one of my sessions last week that was in Schultzy's year level. He said, he came up to me after the session and said, your mum taught me in grade eight. Oh, my God. Off tap. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then a bloke came and said, saw me yesterday and said, man, your dad did the safety induction for me at QAL. Wow. Can you believe that shit? Like, <clears throat> Long-term locals. Eh? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And speaking of our topic oh. today, we were going to touch on relationships yeah. with children, but um, teachers have a big impact yeah. on kids, don't they? If they're, if they're memorable that many years later. You know, we've talked about mm. teachers before and, um, and your lovely wife, Jules, is a teacher mm. and has a huge impact on her students. I should bring her on because she... Um, I've told you her saying, haven't I? Have I yeah, told you, you her saying? I'm sure you have. What? So Repeat it. it. It's not what she teaches them that they'll remember. It's how she made, made them, them feel. feel. That's right. That is right. Heart, 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 baby, heart. Yeah. So, and Matt, do Matt Doyle's on too. We've got a few people on today. Katie Wagner. Too, hey, Katie. Here. Matthew Doyle. Oh, good. oh John Carl. Oh, my see. God. There's some old friends on here. You can see. You can see all that, eh? Yeah, I can see. Anna all right. has joined us. Chris Tane, Tammy. Oh, my son's watching. Like oh, my son's watching and we're Easy. talking about kids. So this will be interesting. Hi, Brendo. Oh, this will 
we should actually we should we should get his take on life, John Cerotti. Maybe I can only get the people on my Facebook page, and you're seeing yours because I I can't see all those people. I got John Cerotti now. Oh, I got Matt Doyle. I've got John Shari. Hi Shari. Hi Mark. Okay. Oh, good day, Alana Ross. Yeah, we've got lots of people on today. So, and there's a lot of people on okay. here that are friends of mine. That who's sorry, my fingers on the phone because I'm swiping. Okay. Um, there's a lot of people who've joined us who our children actually grew up and went to school together. So, oh, I know. Oh, I know. It, so this will be interesting. Every chance as well. Sorry about my finger in the way, guys. Um, every chance we'll have at least one of their teachers join who are good friends of mine too. Yes. So, yes. And when we, when we actually go through how good of parents we were, it'll be interesting to see if we get any reaction from them. Actually, it's funny that you say that because I was reflecting on that today and I have to put my hand up and say I made a lot of mistakes with my kids. I didn't do too bad a job because they're amazing people, but I... I'm going to put both hands... I'm putting both hands up for that one. Yeah. Look, I can tell you that none of us get it right 100% of the time and, and, you know, being children um, who obviously went through, you know, relationship breakups with a parent, that's happening more and more. You know, we talked about the divorce rate recently. So a lot of people go through the struggle of their children having to cope when their parents break up. Um, and mm. we also talked about the fact that a lot of people think they're better, it's better for their children for them to stay together, even together. though the relationship's really bad. And um, I, have to, I have to very um, strongly say that I don't agree that staying together for your children is always the best option, uh, personally. I'm with you. No, yeah. I'm with you. <clears throat> I just don't think you can make your children the best version of themselves if you Self. can't be the best version of yourself. And if you're in an unhappy Self. relationship, you can't be the best version of yourself. Go you, Ros. I think that was, that's really, really well said, girl. Because um, your kids need to see you at your best. And, like, they won't always. And I get that they'll see this stuff. But, but it's, like, it's like leadership, Ros. You've got to be able to lead yourself before you can lead others. You've got to be able to Absolutely. parent yourself before you can parent your kids, right? I agree. And the other thing I, I truly believe, and with everything I've learned over the last couple of years, I, I believe, um, you know, that your children, um, you know, and we talked about this with John, you, you know, your children will mirror your behaviour. And mm. if you allow mm. yourself to be in a relationship and be treated a certain way, then you're mm. teaching your children that mm. that's okay. And, you know, I think, um, remember John told us that you, you guys talked about the twins last week where, I had the murderous father who was on death row and one of the twins was a doctor and the other one was in jail with his dad. And I believe, you know, that children's learned behaviours from the way their their parents actually um, interact and, and allow each other to be treated. Um, and you've talked yeah. about, you know, you're always teaching your sons, if you want to learn how to treat a woman, just watch how I treat your mother. Isn't that the most special thing? And do you know what? Absolutely. Actually, I'm just going to go inside while I've got while I've got the mic. I'm just going to go inside because my phone's going to run out of charge. So I didn't plan that so well. Um, <laughs> and Gwyneth for William. And there's Julie getting now. Are you allowed to get hey, on with Karen. the towel around your baby? Oh, Kirsten Buster. Oh, hey. Oh, Anne and Rachel. There's hey, Jules. hey, Jules. How are you? She's good, girl. She's good. I'm, I'm right, surprised I'm you can find a chair chat. with all those bikes in the room. Yeah, did I show you that? Did you see them in there then? Oh, you probably won't yeah, be able to see the bedroom. Your room. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm actually sitting literally on the bedroom floor here and here. Like I'm looking a bit at shaky. Myself and I'm looking, yeah, I'll, all right, I'm, I'm, um, I think I'm Are you set looking up at now. yourself in the mirror? <laughs> mirror. I know this. I've been sat on the bedroom floor to do a live on a Friday afternoon. Living the dream. So, can I tell you something, though? You know that thing about, and when. It's me old mate here, me old Scots mate. He says, don't compromise on happiness. And I think that's really true too because, you know, doing something for someone else and as much as we will do, we'll actually do more for other people than for ourselves, as you know. And that's why people stay together for the kids. They're willing to, they're actually willing to have a shitty relationship as long as they think their kids are happy. The problem is a shitty relationship doesn't help the kids be happy. Now, can I just say that, um, what you said before was really, really important that, um, you know, watch the way your dad treats your mum. And you know that you really, the thing that I'm really proud of, Ros? 
What's it's that? that Jules actually said Julie actually said that to our boys. And that's great. Never Coming from said... a woman and a woman in a position mm. of respect, those children will take, you know, that with mm. um, a, a whole lot of um, learning, you know, to, to mm. hear from your mother. If you want to know how to treat mm. a lady, then you watch the way your father treats me. Um, mm. You know, and I think that's the best gift that you can give your children, you know, is to actually mm. communicate with them, um, you know, as to how, um, you know, sons should treat their future partners and daughters should treat their future Absolutely. partners. And also, I have to also add to that, um, they need to know what's acceptable for how, how it's acceptable mm. for them to be treated and what, what they deserve in a oh. relationship. Shit, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, and I'll tell you why it's so important for us, Roz, um, that – oh, and by the way, I'm just – like, I know I'm giving myself a rap for, for treating Jules well, but that's just a given for us and our family. Yeah, I but it's true, Anton. Mm. You're not just blowing so your not, own yeah, trumpet. Just... It's very obvious to the people that know you, and it's very obvious when your wife mm. actually speaks about that, especially to your sons. Mm, yeah, thanks, Roz. Uh, it was real – I think that was like um, – you know, I, I say this with so much pride that, you know, my work here is done, you know, as a as a parent sort of thing. Like, I just, I really felt when Jill said that, because she didn't say that to impress me or she didn't say that, you know, for any other reason other than, like, it just came straight out of her mouth and she just said, you know, treat boys. And it wasn't, it was just bang straight out of her mouth, which I thought was really nice. And the reason it was, the reason it's so nice, Roz, is because when Jules and I had two boys, we actually came together. And we, we only ever have ever had two rules for our boys. Rule number one, get adults to like you. Yeah, and we talked about that, yeah. Yeah. And, and like, and again, I don't even know whether that's right. And some people said, you yeah, know, Anton, that's crap because you're telling them to suck up to people. Well, we weren't. We were just, what we were saying was have people skills, become likeable. Because... And that's how I took that is that you actually taught them how to behave and act and communicate with older people who were older than them um, mm. because that earns, earns them respect and obviously it's a reflection of their character which is passed down from you because you've taught them that. Mm. Yeah, no, th absolutely, Ros. And guess what? So now Zach's working for one of those blokes that he spent a lot of time with growing up because this guy's seen him growing, growing up and knows he's a good guy. And you know, that's the other the, thing that that's very obvious to me with your boys um, is from what you and Jules have taught them, it's not just that you haven't just instilled in them, you know, if you want to know how to treat your future wife, watch how your father mm. treats me. It's actually how to treat women in general because, you know, mm. your sons are the same age as my, my kids and, you know, mm. to actually meet them and, you know, they shake your hand, they look you in the eye they always, you know, speak to you with respect. And um, oh, now nice. my dad, you know, grew up in an era where it was rude to swear in front of women. And I think today oh, absolutely. it's it's just, you know, it's so obvious that that's something that's just gone out of the window as far as, mm. you know, and there's a lot of women obviously that swear. I'm, I'm guilty of that myself. Mm. I've never done it live mm. like you, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, and there's... There's no noisy chairs in this bedroom either. No, there's none. And you, yeah, you, you haven't got that excuse this week. <laughs> that's right. But, um, you know, I think that's that fine. it's very evident when uh, you meet uh, young, you know, young adults um, yeah. Yeah, as, to, right. as to how they've been taught to behave. Mm. Uh, and it's very obvious mm. with your boys that, you know, that you have taught them Thanks, to, how to treat people properly. And, abs and thank you for that because um, the other rule, rule number one was be likeable. And rule number two was treat every single female with respect, you know. And, and we said we always said don't be, don't be subordinate or don't be a weak weak partner because women want strong men. They want men that make decisions and they want men who are leaders and that can actually. That was my phone ringing. Yeah, you um, just froze so for a want... second there. Thank you. Yeah, no, I've t I just d d declined the call. Um, they want strong men. At the end of the day, though, just respect women, and guess what? Your life will be so much better. So it's really nice, you know. We didn't we didn't go so well with their diet. Zachy was a bit of a naughty, bad, wicked boy at different times when he was growing up. Um, Which they're the always the day, going to be. Very, that's human. But they're always respectful. So so tell me, what was it for you then? So that's that was our two rules for our kids. 
what 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 sort of things and I, I know independence and all the normal stuff did you have anything that was a bit left field for brendan and Sarah? Uh, Sarah, yeah, look, I think one, one definitely is the same as you, you know, I mean, both of my children have, um, I suppose, because I've always been in industries where I'm around people and talking to people, drove them insane, used to take four hours to do the grocery mm. shopping and the kids always used to joke about the fact that they hated going grocery shopping with me because I'd run into every every person <laughs> that I knew and, um, and I guess that's, even though that annoyed them as kids, um, I think that's helped them with their people skills because... There's, there's a couple of things that my mm. kids are really good at. They're not shy in actually having mm. conversations with people. Um, they know mm. how to give people their time as far as having a conversation mm. and really listening and learning about people. They're both very mm. good at that. Mm. Um, you know, they've both mm. worked in sort of customer service industries where mm. um, I've always had really good feedback, even when they were younger, you know, working at the pizza shop and things like that, always had really good feedback on how good they are with um with talking mm. the kids have both worked in my business at different times and my staff have always been really glowing about wow. the fact that for their ages you know they're beyond their maturity uh their age in maturity mm. as far as being able to you know communicate with with um adults and um and mm. I've, you know i've been very proud of that the other thing i suppose they've always seen seen me in public speaking sort of um avenues right. Uh, you know, and right from when I was at high school, obviously they didn't know me then, but I did rostrum and we've talked about that before. But um, mm -hmm. the ability to actually have the courage and um, skills to actually stand up in front of people and talk because my history, I used mm -hmm. to, when the kids were little, I did party plans. So I used to go to people's houses and sell jewellery in a party plan setting like mm -hmm. Tupperware, that sort of thing. Uh, the kids often were mm -hmm. at those, you know, those events if it was for family or friends. So... They've always, mm -hmm. I suppose it's, it's just natural for them to know that they saw mum standing up there in front of people presenting and, and I suppose that's why they're both wow. actually really good at, at sales, um, you know, in both, yeah. in, in both, in all the jobs that they've had, their, their customer skills yeah. and their ability to speak to people and, um, you know, upsell. Brendan's worked at BWS it's... and the bank and, you wow. know, always had really good feedback on how um, good, good their customer service is. You know, Sarah's worked at Priceline for a good long time. I have yeah. customers that go in there that always, you know, talk about how she's got the ability to, Isn't you know, nice? be. And, and I guess in, in, in that, it's not just the good stuff. You know, it's, I think it's really nah. important to teach kids how to handle um, aggressive situations and conflict because, you know, that can really rattle you. And I tell you what, you want to learn about how to handle conflict, work in retail for a while, because some of the things Sarah's had to put mm. up with, working at a chemist with customers who are upset, mm. um, you know, she's come from, in a few years, she's come from a girl who, you know, would have a full-on meltdown and anxiety attack. Mm. And, um, mm. and, you know, someone came in there and was, you know, raised their voice or got angry. And obviously they take it out on the, mm. the young sales staff. Mm. Um, she's now very confident in the, her ability to handle those situations. She knows they're not attacking her. They're, they're, they're angry at the situation. Mm. So I think it's really important mm. for kids to learn, you know, have those skills as Resilience. well. Resilience. Yeah. Definitely. Isn't, isn't that interesting? That's really nice, Ros, because I, I haven't actually met Sarah that I can remember. I've met Brennan and he's a lovely young man. Um, it's very similar to Zach, um, Brendan is. Very yeah, similar no, personality. That's right, they, are. they are very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? Because when Zach was coming up, and I know I've told you before that he um, he was going to be a psychologist for a little while. You did, yeah. That's, that's how I met John because I was taking him to the men's insight oh, circle, yeah. right? And one day I sat down and I actually asked Zach, oh, so have I ever told you that we sent Zach away to um, to personal development when he was 13? No, He's you haven't. He's been personal development. Okay, so we sent him was away he then? to do personal. De Thirteen. Wow. Okay, that's great. Mm. And we sent him and Toby away for a whole weekend to sit in a room with motivational speakers and learn about life. And they broke them up into groups and did different things and worked with them. We dropped them off Saturday morning, picked them up Sunday. Night. Oh, I think we picked them up. No, Saturday night we picked them up, dropped them back Sunday, and picked them up Sunday night. Right. The Saturday night, Zach comes home. And seriously, he says, holy shit, mum, dad, because mum was, I drove him down here. Holy shit, dad, you know, there's some kids that have got some real issues. Wow. You know, there's drugs and there's, and there's, you know, violence and there's self-harm and there's all this other shit that goes on. He said, we're so lucky, you know that, eh, dad? And I said, well, yeah, absolutely. And he said, oh, I thought you sent us here because we had a really bad life, you know, like a tough life. Wow. He, he said, 
How did you said, react to that? Good... That's that's actually I know, I just a went, big statement. Shit. Yeah. I know. He thought he was like going there to be like punished or you know reprimanded. That he needed I'm fixing. Like, <laughs> That's yeah. fix me up. Let the hit, he- let the healing begin. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and so it was really nice that night to sit down with him. And he said, I think he's, now, mate, I think Ash, that was a, Ash Glass really wants to talk to me. This I know. I was going to say your phone um, just rang again. Hey, you froze for a second again. Yeah. On these weekends, it's all, it's pretty social. Um, <laughs> and so he, he said, and by, by the way, Dad, I'll ne- I'll, I can tell you right now, I'll never do drugs because I can see what it's done to other kids here. Beauty. Um, and I don't know. I hope he hasn't. They, oh, I don't wow. Know, I don't Were know they all the around the same age, the kids that went to this thing? <laughs> wow. Yes. 13. 12, 12 to 17 or something, all these kids. were well, all teenagers. Toad was 14. And then at the end of it, he actually wanted to go and he became a leader. He went and crewed at these events. He loved wow. them so much. We flew him to... We flew into Perth to be a crew leader oh, wow. at these same events. Yeah, true. He he came up through the ranks and then finally we met John and went to Men's Insight Circle. And what actually was interesting was what you said about Sarah and that resilience and stuff. What um, what So I said to Zach one day, talk me through it, my little man. Why do you want to become a psychologist? Do you know what he said? And this spun me out because <laughs> he, said, he said, I've been in so much trouble. <laughs> At school, you know, at home, I get in trouble all the time. And he said, and I've seen the trouble that other kids have been in from the personal development work that he'd been doing. And he said, my experience can help others. Oh, how good is that? Holy. Wow. And he was like 15 or something at the time. What a great thing to recognise. I know. Very much. Isn't that that interesting that in just a weekend or a week they can actually – you know, going from dad sending us away because we're naughty <laughs> to, yeah, you know, so. we actually don't have a bad life. We actually, uh, you know, <laughs> we have a great life and, and, you know, we can learn mm. so much by other people, you know, other people going through the, the bad stuff that they're going through it's because stuff. that's, and, that's and I think right. that's really, really important uh, as well. And um, going back to, you know, lessons that we've taught our kids, um, I think, you know, make sure they're exposed to those things, you know, make sure Mm. they're aware of um, that other kids Mm. that have, you know, a really rough life and, um, you know, I think um, being, and that's where a lot of thing, you know, a lot of communication comes in with your children is making sure that you, uh, okay, Alberto's joined us. Um, You'll be proud. You'll be happy to know Alberto that Anton's been drinking before the triathlon, so he should smash it. (laughs) (laughs) He's following your rule this time. (laughs) I don't know if even Canadian Jewel said that the same as wine. <laughs> no, I don't. even Jewel, I said, Jules, let's go for a CC. And she looked at me. She said, You serious? You want to drink on the Malulava Tri weekend? I said, Yeah. Thank yeah, you. get back to us on that one. I want to see how that works. <laughs> That's right. So, um, yeah, I think so, that, um, mm. I think definitely exposing your kids, making sure, you know, they are um, exposed to, mm. you know, uh, situations where they can learn about that stuff. I know that Sarah got sent away with um, with the Young Rotary Group. Um, they did a, a thing mm. at Taniella. Um, you know, they, mm. you know, Rotary help. Ripen. Um, you know, yeah, Ripen. She, she went to Ripen. And um, I think also, you know, the kids went to um, private schools. They went to Catholic schools where they obviously teach them a lot mm. about, you know, charity and, and making sure, you that know, is. Yeah, and I mean, not just not that's not to say that doesn't happen in the public schools, no, but I'm just right. talking no, about right. what my that's kids right. were exposed to. And um, I yeah. guess knowing I've always, you know, had community involvement and, and volunteered a lot and, mm. and fundraised and things like that. And I think when they're exposed to, a, you know, parents who are doing that, it becomes very obvious very quickly that there's a mm. lot of other people less fortunate than them, um, which mm. obviously can make them a whole lot more grateful for what they have and what they're given. Mm. So... Absolutely. Mm. No, I agree. We've got Tony Gian, Gian, Gianetto who's mm. just joined us too. Oh, I've got um, a few friends. I don't know what's happened. I must be live yeah, on my page yeah. today for some reason because I, I've, I've got friends so, so. who are watching that I haven't seen watch live before. So, yeah, yeah, it's odd. Maybe I've, maybe I've been able to share it directly to the page so I'm live. So, mm. Do you want to hear the mistakes hey, I, I think you my... I made? Oh, you go first. Oh. I was no, I, I'm, I was going to say. Do you know my biggest regret as a parent? Yeah, go on. What, Tell what, me yours your, first. All right. 
and it's only it's only the last couple of years that I've really got my head around this, Roz. So, and I still do personal development. So I spoke at a, and I was lucky enough to actually be a, a participant too on the weekend at a personal development seminar for four or five days. And it was all about leadership and relationships and um, communication and all the stuff I teach. So it was really interesting to go away and learn about that stuff and just increase my skill set. And, um, you know, there was this thing, Roy, the guy running it talked about the three levels of love. And there's, and like there's, there's the, these things work just the same personally and professionally, right? Yeah. They're just a different, obviously type, but they're, they're, you know, you can imagine there's three different types. So let's say personally, you know, there's, there's a courting type love. Then there's a partnership type love was the words. So you yeah. court, you know, that love and that, and there's probably a bit of lust in that lust, when you first yeah. start, you know, and then you go to the, the partnership stuff. So, you know, when you're, you, you're long-term married and, or even short-term married, you've got to go past the lust. And now we're building this whole relationship thing and we're going to take this forward together. Yeah. And then, then you get to the point where we, we have this thing called an unconditional love, you know, like no matter what happens, I'm never leaving you, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think that, and that happens professionally too. So, you know, you get into it, you meet someone and go, let's do some business and you get to a point where the Honeymoon business starts phase. and then all of us do that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, it, then there's an unconditional love for a partner, even though it's professional, it might be a business partner, but yeah. you know, there's nothing you won't do for him. If you get to that point, you walk over a broken glass for him. And I think that I just wish someone had explained the words unconditional love to me in relation to parenting when I was a young, younger man, because I, I think as I look back on it, um, especially with Zach, it was like, um, you know, if you get good grades, we'll love you. you. You know, you never say that, but, you know, you've got to get better grades or you've got to, you know, you know you're know, you not a good boy or, or, or whatever. Or um, You can do better you know, at feel sport like it, or you need to win or, yeah. You know, that sort of stuff. And, yeah. and I think what – and it's like that Alanis Morissette song you sent through, so thanks for that. I'll get you to talk through that in a second. I will, actually, and I'll uh, post the link to that song we're talking about, Perfect, by Alanis mm -hmm. Morissette, which um, is very Deep much song. about living through your children and trying to get them to, you know, live the life you missed out on and, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And I think that um, – I think we, me, probably – um, not meaning to do it, you know, one of the kids to be the best versions of themselves. And I think that probably showed up in conditional love. You, you be a good boy and we'll love you sort of thing. So, and it comes from a, so it comes from a loving place when you do that with your children. Mm. And I think mm. most decisions that we make, whether we decide later on that they were a good or bad decision are always from a place of love. And I know what right. you mean about that. You know, when you, I think, and a lot of times because we've lived longer, you know, I, I um, used to stress about the same things to the children. You know, if you don't study hard, you won't get good grades and then you won't get a good job. And mm. then you'll, you know, you'll have mm. a job that doesn't pay mm. much and your life won't be as good. And so, you know, you do yeah. tend to push that stuff onto them, but your intentions are good. Yeah. No, just, that's right. It, yeah. It's all done with the best intention, with the best skills that we've got at the time, as they say, is, and as, as you and I talk about our own parents, you know, we say they did the best at the time with what they had with the right intent. And um, anyway, so I think and if I had my time an amazing again, thing. if I had my time again, I think I'd do some of that a little bit differently. We probably, I'd love to, after you talk next about the um, Nigel Clements is on the uh, Alanis Morissette song. I'd love to know more about this vicarious living through your kids. Cause our kids weren't good at much, especially <laughs> sports. So we never, we never had that problem. <laughs> Yeah, John, we'll have to get John back on because he was telling us a bit mm. about that last week and how many mm. um, how how many relationships are actually uh, affected by, you know, people trying to live through their children and um, mm. and it can have a negative impact on your relationship even, mm. especially oh. your relationship with your children. But, um, it, yeah. you know, people can push it a bit too far, I think, and the kids end up yeah. not liking them very much, you know. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. So so and I guess me, what's so the movie? What's the Robin Williams movie where is it not Good Will Hunting? The other one, you know, where he's the professor and the young boy um, wants to be an actor and his parents pushed oh. him to go to uni and be a lawyer or something and he ended up committing suicide. Which movie was that? Um, when he was the professor at the university. 
you know, Shit, no. anyone want to help this? Help us here. Suicide. Yeah. Um, and they yeah, they used no, to that... say, "Oh, captain, my captain." Remember, they called him the oh, student. Um... De Dead Poets Society. Dead Poets Society, yes. That's Society. a very good example yes. of what can happen yes. if, you know, parents do push their children too far to, to, do, to live mm. the life they want them to live, not letting the child mm. choose their own path. You know, that's so what, a severe so, sort of outcome, obviously. So did you make any mistakes as a parent, Ros? None. <laughs> oh, good. Good. <laughs> That's, and, that's why um, your kids so are so not beautiful. True. Oh, no, that's so not true. I made a lot of mistakes, I can tell you. And uh, I made some really yeah. good I, – I did some really good stuff, I can yeah. tell you. And and hindsight, you know, shows you, shows you that. But I still, I still yeah. believe one of my biggest mistakes was being too overprotective of my kids. Um, you know, I, oh. I had a lot of anxiety and was, was constantly worried about them getting hurt or, or something happening to them. And oh. that's, that really made me a parent that was overly protective – you know, right. um, if Brendan wanted to go camping with his mates, you know, I often said no to things like that because I was scared that something was going to happen to him. And, you know, I wasn't the mum mm -hmm. who let the kids walk to school because something might happen to them. And, you know, and obviously looking sure. back, I know now, and I have actually worked a lot on that and have realised they're, you know, young adults and they've got to live their own life. But I, that's my biggest regret as far as the kids go probably is, um, is to have just been too overprotective. And, like I said before, it was it was coming from a good place and I had really good intentions yeah. in my mind. Absolutely. I was protecting them because I didn't want them to get hurt. But, no. you know, you can't control everything that kids do and they still think Sarah yeah. broke the same arm three times and, you know, that, that's oh. going to happen no matter how safe an environment they're in. And um, mm. it's, it's one thing, I, I guess, um, you know, it's hard to let go of a lot of times. Um, mm especially when I guess you've been through a breakup as well and you, you it's just you and your kids mm. a lot of times, you know, they're all you've got mm. and you, you know, it's, it's easy mm. to become overly protective because, um, you know, you feel like you have to be majorly, you know, protective mm. cause it's just you, you know what I mean? And mm. not that their father was never in their life. He was always in their life, but you know, there's, mm. there's a couple of things I'm extremely proud of and I, have you know a lot of friends and know a lot of people who have been through relationship breakups and they use the kids as pawns and I hate that you know I really mm. really really can't stand seeing the damage it does to kids when when people mm. who've separated you know use they mm. use their children as pawns in this in this horrible game of breakup and um, you know I've, I've been through it uh, with my kids dad and you know I will very very um, strongly hold my hand up and say that my children could say they have never, ever heard me say one bad word against their father, you know, and I made an agreement with myself back then and it was a long time ago. Um, it's my relationship with him that, that ended as husband and wife. Oh, God, you're going to so win this triathlon. <laughs> <laughs> She's a good wife. She She's is a, a great wife. wife. She is. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I always, I always made it very clear to the kids that, you know, um, he's always going to be their dad and he's always going to love them and they're always going to love him. And, you know, mum and dad were, you know, we're good friends. We just couldn't be married anymore. But I think, you know, people take it too. Wow. And he's, he's always still been involved in our wow. lives. And I know it's not that easy for everybody, but wow. I think one, usually one or both partners who've split up um, really make it tough on the kids because they actually are trying to, project their anger for the other partner um, through their mm. kids. And they think if I make these children hate their father or their mother, um, then I'll win brownie points. And, you know, I've, I've often said to people, you know, please don't talk bad about your, you know, their father mm. or, or mother in front of them because mm. you know what, Anton, those kids are going to grow up one day and those kids are going to be adults and those kids are going to work a lot out for themselves and I truly believe that trying to brainwash them into hating the other parent, and I'm not saying this in all circumstances, because obviously I've been through two completely different types of relationships and, you know, any form of abuse is not nice to go through. And, you know, I try to teach different lessons to my kids um, out of that relationship where, you know, I, I want them to know how they deserve to be treated and how they, you know, how they should be treating their partner. Um, but as far as the parents of your children, you know, the, the, father or mother of your own children I think you know a lot of people take it way too far and it has this this lifelong impact on every decision that they make because 
you know, they'll have a lot of, a lot of times the kids will end up growing up with a lot of resentment for the parents who actually badmouth the other person, you know? And I, I think that's, yeah, something that is really bad. One of the bad, worst things about breakups is when there's little kids involved and children use them as pawns yeah. and they hate it. Holy shit, Ros, that's, that's deep, girl. Thanks for opening up your heart because that's, um, you know, that's deep stuff. I, can I tell you a little bit of a story about me that you won't know? Yeah, please. So, um, and it's interesting because I, I sort of never speak about this ever, really. Um, you know, my first memory was um, as a kid. Actually, I, I better not. I better not because I might, um, I might yeah, overstep careful. the mark while mum's, while mum's still alive. So mum was in, a, in an abusive relationship, basically, and I saw some pretty interesting stuff when I was a kid, let's say. So I might just I might keep it at that level, but what I'll say is that I I, um, I experienced breakup in a family as a really young boy, and you're right, it was it was a and I still remember it. I still remember the emotions. I still remember sleepless nights, you know, between the years ages of four and eight until <clears> mum remarried, until life became settled again. And my mum was like you, Ros. She was so 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 beautiful I suppose in the way that she managed herself and you know it's only now when you reflect and look back on how how dignified and how um and how I suppose what's the right word if, you, if it was in business you'd say professional but just Digni- how dignity it's, it's, dignity yeah, with, yeah. With, digni- with, dig- with dignity ease and grace and um it's funny what you say about um, kids remembering because we've got a freaking long memory. Oh, Sarah oh, yeah. Ford, we just bumped into us. Kids have got a long memory. This stuff goes back 40 years, these memories. And, you know, I, I remember um, being scared, you know, and I remember, I remember being anxious and I remember all of the, all of those emotions because it's, it's the emotional situations that make us remember because, you know, when you have those emotions that go up or down and, um, that that locks that's what locks memories in. You know, we have an extremely high, a great emotional experience, and we go, "You great," locked in, or we have a really shitty emotional experience, and we either suppress it in our subconscious, or it sits there and we don't learn anything from it. And it, then all of a sudden, over time, it Explode, becomes depression. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and so, um, you know, it's really really powerful what you say there about um you know, about parents and how they show up in the world during that breakup period. Cause I've been lucky. I haven't had to go through it like you have in saying that I've seen my mum go through it and I've seen her do it with dignity, with dignity and grace. And, you know, I, it, it's it knowing even at that age, I probably had an inkling in my heart of hearts, how hard that would have been for her to, to go through that, you know, and she, she didn't know how to handle it. She did exactly the, what you did, overprotective. Um, she bought us animals, you know. She, she did everything she could to try and um, to help us blow, out and yeah. help us through. <laughs> Soften the blood. Yeah, yeah. And put us in – and she took us down to football because she said we were getting a bit soft just being with her and, you know, like – And that's interesting because you said you, – you told us in a previous live um, what a, a huge impact your, one of your coaches had on you. So obviously yeah. that male influence, you know, certainly helped That's you because you were. What did you? What did you say that you were? A bit of a rat, a rat bag. bag. <laughs> bit of a rat bag. Bit of a rat bag. Shit, I was I was like Zach by ten. <laughs> so. But I think. Um, so yeah, those you know, are the days. It, it's interesting that you say a lot of that stuff. You just don't work out until you're an adult, and I've got a very uh, close friend going through. Um, you know, a, a breakup at the moment with, and, and they've got children, young children. Um, and she watched me go through all the, you know, the drama and emotion of the last couple of years and hey, get into it. Look at you go. Oh yeah, loving it. Troy boy. Troy boy. <laughs> I'm going right. to take up triathlon if it means drinking CC. <laughs> <laughs> Great sport. Great sport. <laughs> so, um, you know, talking, you know, talk, obviously I'm trying to support her through this and, and I've got a few friends actually going through bad breakups and similar situations where there's young children involved. And it's, it's so hard, Anton, especially the early days, you know, when it's raw and you've said you've got a couple of friends who out of the blue, it just happened and they had no idea it was coming. And, mm. um, and I think, you know, um, it's, what's the hardest thing 
early on, you as a person, you, you, you're suffering so badly. Like, you know, there's so mm. much hurt and anxiety and stress mm. and, mm. you know, um, depending if you instigated the breakup or if the, the other person did, mm. you know, there's so many questions. And so, you know, to throw two, two or three little people into the mix there when mm. you're messed up and knowing how to handle mm. that as a mum or a, or a dad mm. and how do you actually, you know, still have that open communication with your kids without having to mm. badmouth the other person because that person ultimately is still their father or still their mother. Mm. Um, and like I said, mm. this please don't think that I mean this is for every single relationship because they are different as far as how the breakups happen. But as far as mm. the projecting your anger and your hate and your mm. um, stress onto your children, um, I think people need mm. to be extremely careful because um, it is, you know, that, that, that other parents is still their mum or dad. And, you mm. know, their relationship with their mum or dad, that they're totally confused already. There was a lot of anger. You know, you, you need to be age appropriate with your conversations with the kids. You know, when Brennan and Sarah, they were completely different ages. You know, Brennan was, um, you know, probably, I don't know, five, six, five, six, something like that. Um, and Sarah was only, you know, preschool. Or So the conversations I had to have with both my children when I separated were completely different. You know, you, you can't you can't um, open up the same way to a 14 year old in, during a breakup mm. as you would talk to a three year old, you know? Um, mm. Mm. I think for me, and this is all personal mm. experience for me, the biggest mm. thing is to actually sit and talk to the children and allow them to communicate to you how they're feeling. You need to let them mm. tell you how they how angry they are or, you know, how, how, um, upset they are or and Brendan was angry with me obviously you know Brendan was angry and I don't mm. want this and I want dad to still live with us and and you know I, I was in a position where I could at least reassure him no matter no matter you know what the circumstances are in any relationship if the other parent's still going to see the child I think they need reassurance to say you know he's, mm. he's still going to be your father and he'll still be your dad he'll still love you you'll still get to see him we just won't be living mm. together anymore and you know, I think that's that's mm. where you've got to have real age-appropriate conversations, and it, it's mm. it's a horrible time. Like the emotion you're going through Sorry, yourself, it's hard to push that to the side for a second and say, you know what, if if these words come out of my mouth and I start actually, you know, talking badly about their dad or their mum, you know, is that actually in the best interest of my children, or am I just trying to get my crap out on them to make them not like him? Because I'm, I'm not liking him trying, much at the moment. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, am I trying to just make myself feel better? Yeah, because I'm trying to build an army and my I want my children on my yeah. side. It's not about, the, yeah. you know, your children have two parents. And, you know, I, I really don't, I, I really, I've seen some kids really damaged by, um, and the hate just builds. Like, honestly, you know, you've been through enough. And, you know, hats off to me and my ex-husband, Steve. You know, Steve and I have a really great relationship. We've got, we're very close yeah, still. Good. You know, we talk a lot. We see each other a lot. We're at every single every single event that our children, you know, have ever been involved in. We're both there. We both supported them. And I think once we got through that initial hurt and anger stage, you know, we had a, a mm. very mature conversation where, you know, we I just said, mm. you know, can we agree that our marriage is over? Um, and can we agree oh. that from this point forward, our children are our number one priority? Forget what we've been through. You know, I'd like us to stay friends and be amicable. But yes. our number one priority when we both make decisions and have conversations has got to be our children. Yes. And, you know, I think they will attest to the fact that making that mature decision back then and for us to still mm. be... And like I said, this isn't going to be able to happen with everyone. Mm. Um, no. But I think it's really important for the children, you know, to... to um, and they've I seen agree. us close. That they're, they're happy 20-something-year-old. Isn't that nice? So mm. yeah, and 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 Mark Cuthel's just coming back to what I said before: why we remember things that are emotionally significant. He said we remember things that were dangerous, important, pleasurable, or interesting. Which that's is so true, Mark. Yeah, it is. And Phil Phil de Corsi's on all the way from South Australia too. Yeah, it is. So Ros, that's Ros. You need to be a relationship coach or something. <laughs> I don't know about that. I just am talking from my personal experience, and if. You know, if I've been through it myself and I can help um, mm. people through it, it, it's just, I guess it's just, um, it's it's really um, interesting. Like, you know, I mean, I told you I'm in my relationship coaching group and, you know, mm. 
when, when you're in it, Anton, like when you're in that initial phase of breakup, I can tell you, you know, it just does something to you. The emotion, it, it, it really does completely consume you, you know, and, and I see my friends going through it now. And at that time when my friends who are where I am now were saying to me, I promise you it gets better. It's tough, but you'll, you'll be in a better place. You'll look back That's at this true. and you just don't, honestly, you, you find it so hard to believe, you know, you really do find it hard to believe when you are in that place. And, you know, especially if you've got little children and, you know, you've got everyone, your family judging you and everyone's got your opinion. You don't know, you know, who is your friend um, that's taken stuff back to him or, you know, like you've got all this stuff going on. Um, but being as far out as I am uh, and, and obviously still have a long way to go, but experiencing what I've experienced, I now look at people who are fresh into a breakup and I see this fights over their kids and property and who's going to live where and who's getting the house and, you know, the lawyers get involved and it gets really messy and that adds a whole other level of stress to it and financial stress. So I think, um, you know, just by using the experiences of, of where I'm at now, um, it's just, it's a matter of just talking about it and reassuring people that it does get better. <laughs> it's a long, sure. long journey, but yeah. Thanks. And if your kids Thanks can come sure, out mom. as great as my kids are, then, you know, I must have done oh. something a bit right. <laughs> Good on you, girl. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, you know, because since you and I have been starting talking about relationships, I've been keeping my ears open a little bit more just for the way people are talking, especially females and just some of the words and the languaging that they use just about their relationship. And, and it's funny because I was speaking to a girl on the weekend at this seminar that I was at, and she's just gone through a breakup, you know, and he, she wasn't with him long, but years, like years relationship. Yeah. And... Um, you know, it was interesting. You know how you said that females check out early and, and most of most relationships are actually ended by the female? Yeah. That's what, yeah, my research has statistically, yes. <laughs> well, what was interesting was, you know Disclaimer, what that's my dis- <laughs> <laughs> It's Google's fault. Yeah, it's no Google expert, no Google. expert, just the, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I've, just, I've just Googled the shit out of it. You know, she said, she said, I'd check out my... I'd checked out months before. Wow. I just had to find I just had to find the right time to share that with him. Can you believe that? So I can because I, the, I, know. I know a lot of women who check out way early and mm-hmm. they beg the man for help and they beg him to, you know, counselling and they beg him to, you know. Um, and I'm not saying men are full, like, well, all women are faultless. Oh, like, God, yeah. no. Like, I've no, put my hand right, up, yeah. very happily put yeah. my hand up and say, you know, nobody's perfect. And I certainly wasn't in any relationship I've been in. But I yeah. I can't tell you the amount of relationships I, I know. It's very, very rare um, with the people that I know and, and the counselling groups I'm in, very rare for the men the, to be the one the, that, the that, yeah, yeah, that instigates right. the breakup. And then mainly, a lot of the times, the guys are really just shocked. They, they have no idea it's coming. That's right. They've got no idea. That's right. No, just, just just like, holy shit, where'd that come from? One day. My, what they don't realise is it's been going on for the last six months. Don, Donna's, Donna's saying if you have a friend going through this, set reminders in your phone to constantly check on them. That's a good idea. Oh, Ros, have you? Oh, no. You have frozen very, very... Yeah with a sort of a very neutral facial expression. Well, team, I don't even know if you can hear me still. Can you hear me still, Donna? Or anyone out there in Facebook Live land? I can hear me. Can you hear me, Ros? And I think that might be the end of our live today because that was great fun and I hope you got some value from that. So um, that was really interesting to unpack like his parents and the, I suppose, the good things. Because I think, you know, you've got to look back and give yourself a rap. Sometimes we, we have done good stuff as parents. And I know there's two things that we taught our kids, if you listen back over this. And sorry we've lost Roz. She's probably going to come back on and listen to the end of this. Um, there's some really positive things we do and there's some stuff that we don't do so well. And then, of course... Let's look after our kids if we go through relationship breakdowns. That's a tragic time. I've been through it. Sorry, Frozen. No, you're all good, girl. It's about that time anyway, so I better go and um, do some more triathlon preparation, a.k.a. Canadian Club. 
team, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for tuning in to listen to the Gins and Rolls on a Friday Arve, all the way from Malilaba. Thanks, Roz and Anton, says John Sorotti. Anytime, my man. Thank you, bro. And we'll, I think we got Matt Burnett next week and then, oh, Mark Carthel, Tony Burns. Just sorry, Tony, Stephen Jack. The best report you can get as a parent is when others tell you, you know how good your kids have turned out. Steve Lindley or Jackie Lindley, who, whichever one, isn't that the most, the bestest, bestest things? And do you know what, Steve and, or Jackie, whoever I'm talking to, do you know what? Gremlins. I go out of my way, Steve and Jackie, to actually, literally, I, if, if there's any time, any time that I can find a positive, and, I, and it's, I, it's regular. I'll say to someone, geez, your kids have done well today or good work with your kids or, you know, I bumped into your son the other day because all my kids have grown up and, and all they've all got buddies and I know all their parents. I never miss an opportunity to tell a parent how special their kid is. It just lights them up. Thanks for everyone I got booted, says Ross. It lights parents up. Now, can I tell you something? This is what I learned also recently is that one thing parents want to hear from their kids is how good a job we did as parents. Now, I know that kids might not actually believe that we were the best parent, but I think every kid could agree, and us out there, and I'm talking to you, whoever's watching, that our parents did some really good stuff. They kept us alive this long for a start. And I think I'm going to go, I, I know, I, I make a commitment to you, fingers in the eye and cross my heart and all that sort of jazz and whatever, that I'm actually going to go to my parents and, and thank them for doing a good job. Now, imagine that. I think every parent on the planet would love to be thanked by their kids for doing a good job. And I think that would make their day. So I think as kids, good luck, Gins. Cheers, Ros. Mark, see you in two weeks, my man. Righto, troops. Always a pleasure doing Gins and Rolls on a Friday. We love it. We're at Malula Bar. You're wherever you are. Stay strong. Be fantastic. Live the dream and get in flow. And we'll see you again next Friday afternoon. Thanks, everyone.